We are covering, of course, Aaron O'Toole's big win last night uh, as the new Conservative Party leader. He came away with 57 percent of the vote on the third ballot. But another big part of this story is Leslin Lewis and her success months after being relatively unknown by a number of party members and Canadians. I want to bring in Steve Outhouse. We fixed the technical issues. He, he was Leslin Lewis's campaign uh, manager and he joins us now in Ottawa. Hey, Steve, glad we fixed those issues. It's good to see you. Good to see you too, Rashi. So let me ask you a bit about wh what you were feeling going into last night. I was very curious watching it all unfold. Did you anticipate the result that you that you ended up with? We were hoping to be you know, very competitive and we had numbers that showed that we had a shot of maybe even breaking like into that second place spot. And then if once you're in second and the, you know, the third place was coming off, if we could get there, we knew that you know anything was possible, and unfortunately, we didn't quite make it over that line. Obviously, as you, you said in your intro, I mean, to have a candidate who was a relative unknown just a few months before, uh, if you told me at the beginning of this that we were going to be in a spot where you know she would be in a three-way race and winning the popular vote on the second ballot, um, you know, I would have been thrilled by that. And then, of course, once you get that close to it, then you're like, oh, just that five percent more if we could have gotten, then uh, you know might have been even even more exciting, but uh, we're, we're very pleased with how it went. So tell me from your vantage point how you went from that starting point that, that you and I just outlined to what happened last night. I read uh, one interview you did where you talked about, for example, uh, how the debates were a bit of a turning point, at least with respect to fundraising. What do you think, what do you think it was that, uh, that changed the momentum for your campaign? Yeah, so she, the, the pandemic was actually a little bit of a, of a, a, it leveled the playing field a little bit, frankly, for us at the at the outset, because with uh, Mr. O'Toole and Mr. McKay having these established networks and a bit more name recognition, well, a bit, quite a bit more name recognition, uh, they were able to kind of, they were crisscrossing the country and they had early money raised, so they were able to travel. And uh, as Dr. Lewis kind of got started with that, when once that got shut down, it forced us to be a bit more creative and use kind of the digital side of things a little bit more. And so that, you know, the Zoom meetings that we were holding on regular basis across the country started to generate sort of some buzz and some people, you know, very interactive. And you were able to connect with, frankly, a lot more people in the run of a day than you could if we'd had her on a traditional campaign and had her, you know, driving for hours in between stops and what have you. So that actually worked a little bit to our advantage. Um, around, you know, leading up into the debates is when she really, um, I would say, was finding her voice very much on the on the in the um, kind of the race and uh, and had a lot of messages and I know that sometimes people think oh we we draft everything as staffers and so on but uh, you know we wake up in the morning we pick up our phones and there were voice memos from her and she's like okay here's the next email that we need to send out and it's about uh, you know things like Black Lives Matter and things like uh, defunding the police and and even kind of high level messages about the importance of guarding against you know socialist approaches to government I mean these are things that are uh, you know, maybe not typical emails that you'd send out, but she would she'd feel very strongly about these topics and want to want to comment. And that's when things started to really switch and people started to kind of dive in. And uh, and we saw a lot of positive response and her Facebook and, and social media channels were growing organically without paid advertising. And uh, and the donations really started to come in at that point in time. What do you think her win says more, more or her, her, I shouldn't say her win, sorry, her, her relative win, her, her success. <laughs> <Thank you>. Yeah, <laughs> it was a long night. I'm making a lot of mistakes. Yes. Uh, her, her, what do you think her success says in particular, given how important her supporters were ultimately to Mr. O'Toole's victory about the strength of what I'm sure you know a lot of, uh, you know, the pundits are talking about today, and that is social conservatism in the party. I know that wasn't her entire message. It was a part of her identity, though, and one that she definitely talked about a lot. What does it say about that? Yeah, so I think in terms of, I, yes, you're, you're right. The social conservative vote was not the extent, and, and it, she certainly grew beyond that. She started as what people would have considered a social conservative candidate, but then she really grew into a leadership candidate who was a social conservative or is a social conservative. And she showed how you can have you know, social conservative, you can be a social conservative, and still have a message that appeals to a broader spectrum of conservatives and a broader spectrum, frankly, of Canadians. So I hope that that's the message. I mean, for myself, I, I, was, I was a staffer for years in 
the Harper government before anyone ever told me that I was actually called a, a social conservative. I, I didn't know. I just knew I was a conservative and I wanted to see, you know, financial management in the government and, you know, less intervention when it wasn't necessary. And, and, and someone finally told me I had a label. And I was like, oh, OK. And then I found out I was scary, you know, and so because I was a, so, a scary social conservative. And so I hope what this does is starts to show that there's there, there's a significant number of social conservatives in our party who who don't want to, to force things on people or, or force our views on the whole entirety of, of, you know, certainly the country. We recognize there's a diversity there. We just really want to be part of the big blue tent. And I think she showed that and modeled it very well. And I, I hope that that's something that people see is that we need social conservatives in our party if we're going to unite and win. And we don't need to keep picking this fight of, oh, let's kick out the social conservatives to, to be more appealing. Uh, I think she showed that you can be a social conservative and you can be respectful. And I believe that you can win over the hearts and minds of the electorate. So what does this mean for Ms. Lewis's future in particular? Lots of conversation right now. Every, I know I'm texting everyone I can saying, well, well what's Aaron O'Toole going to do next? Who does he bring into the fold? She, she doesn't have a seat, but there, there are big questions about whether she will run for one. I had one conservative last night say she can write her ticket for whatever she wants in this party. What, what can you tell us? Well, she's very interested in, in continuing, uh, you know, on this journey. And she, uh, you know, obviously she, she wishes, you know, Mr. O'Toole all the best as his leader and is ready to work under his leadership. And uh, and I'm sure the two of them will connect at, at some point in time um, and, and have those types of discussions about what will, you know, what involvement she'll have. But, uh, yeah, she has indicated that she's definitely interested in, in, in pursuing a seat in Parliament and would like to, to continue on and to, I believe she will be a powerful voice within the conservative movement. I think she brings so much to the table. Obviously, uh, you know, I was, I'm biased and I recognize that, you know, but it, uh, I think that she can really help our party, you know, grow uh, in its vote. And that's, that's the goal is to have our party win the next election. And I think she can play a key part in that. You said you, you, you're sure they'll connect. They haven't yet, not to your knowledge. Not, not to my knowledge at this point in time, no. But I, I know that uh, there's a lot that's got to go on on day one after winning, uh, <laughs> winning a race, and uh, and uh, even from her perspective, I think that the drive home to the GTA with her family today was probably a time where uh, they could probably just reconnect a little bit. All right, I'll leave it there. Thanks a lot, Steve. Appreciate you making time for us as always. Great. Thanks for having me on. Steve Outhouse was the campaign manager for Leslin Lewis.